Well, hey guys, I've been seeing a lot of comments across my videos. Please discuss the new EU regulations on sunless tanners. Are they safe? Are they banned? So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I upload skincare content here on YouTube. If that's of interest to you, definitely subscribe. Hit the bell notification that alerts you when my videos go live. I'm also over on TikTok and Instagram pretty regularly, so consider following me there as well. Sunless tanners. Dihydroxyacetone is the active ingredient in sunless tanners. Dihydroxyacetone is a sugar derived from glycerol, and when you put it on the skin, it interacts with the protein keratin, amino acids and keratin proteins in the very top layer of the skin undergo something called the Maillard reaction to produce brown pigments known as melanoidins. And that is what gives the skin a brown to caramel tan color without requiring you to expose yourself to the harmful effects of ultraviolet radiation. This was actually first discovered as an accident. Scientists spilled this on the skin. They noticed, hey, I turned my skin brown. And so later it was pioneered into sunless tanning products back in the 50s. One of the first sunless tanning products that came out, this is a historical point, was around 1959. It was called Mantan. It was an aftershave lotion. And that was so popular that they made like 20 million in sales in the first six months, which for 1959 was a pretty hefty chunk of change. And after that, a lot of other companies you know, followed suit, creating different types of sunless tanning products. At the time, they were not as sophisticated as they are today. It went on very streaky, left the skin very orange, but people still really like that. So this ingredient, it has been used in sunless tanning products for a good long while now, and it is very, very safe. One of the benefits actually of sunless tanners is that you don't have to expose your skin to UV to get that brown pigment color that you're looking for. And so it deters people from choosing either to sunbathe or to go in a tanning bed, which one trip to the tanning bed elevates your risk of skin cancers, including the deadly melanoma substantially. Tanning beds give you a really, really, really intense dose of deadly UVA rays that really just destroy your skin. So this is a much better option, totally safe to apply to the skin. In terms of dermatology, patients who have the skin condition vitiligo, it's an autoimmune attack against your pigment cells. You get patches of skin that are depigmented. A lot of patients with vitiligo enjoy using sunless tanners to kind camouflage the patches of vitiligo. And one thing you may not be aware of about sunless tanners is that they actually can offer a little bit of protection against certain long wavelengths of UVA rays that come from the sun. And those long wavelengths penetrate really deeply, they damage collagen, and a lot of sunscreens don't actually cover those rays so well, with the exception of the new Uvimune 400 from La Roche-Posay, their new filter. But you you know, prior to that, sunscreens, they can only block up to a certain point of the UVA wa wavelengths. But we discovered a while ago that DHA and sunless tanners can actually help add some additional protection against those longer wavelengths. And you may be like, so what, who cares? But for people with certain photosensitive skin conditions, namely polymorphous light eruption, something called actinic perigo, and certain medications can make you sensitive to the sun, this has always been something that has been of interest as an adjuvant to sun protection for these patients because many sunscreens don't adequately protect against the rays from the sun that do trigger those diseases. For example, a 3% DHA cream has been shown to increase the sun tolerance of patients with polymorphous light eruption anywhere from 2.4 to 13.5 fold. And I know a lot of you guys have PMLE or polymorphous light eruption. It's pretty, it can be pretty debilitating depending on, you know, the severity of your skin condition. Also has been shown to be helpful for patients who deal with solar urticaria. What the heck is that? Urticaria is a medical term for hives. Um, and certain hi, certain types of hives are triggered by uh, exposures. Uh, I've got a video talking about aquagenic 
urticaria, basically you come in con your skin comes in contact with water and that triggers hives. But you also can develop hives when you are exposed to UV rays and a lot of times it's those longer UVA wavelengths that come through glass, so it's not just when you're outside, that can trigger, trigger hives. And getting um, sunscreens that adequately protect against those rays is actually quite challenging. So sunless tanner with DHA is, is an, you know, an attractive adjuvant for these patients. So all that to say, it's a safe ingredient to apply to the skin. It can be irritating. Some people develop a contact dermatitis to it, but it's not a harmful ingredient. I've heard myths on the internet that it you know, accelerates skin aging. That is absolutely a myth. If anything, because of its ability to offer some protection against those long wavelengths of UVA, it may actually you know, ultimately have some sort of anti-aging benefit, although that has not been substantiated. So what's the deal now with the EU then? That's what you clicked on this video to learn about. It's not as scary as it sounds. So in the US, DHA has been regulated for a long time as a colorant, so it has to meet certain standards for purity. But in the EU, up until this point, it has not really been regulated. But recently, the EU has introduced some restrictions around the use of DHA in sunless tanners. It's not as scary as it sounds, trust me. It's probably not gonna even affect whatever product that you are currently using if you live in the EU and you like to use a sunless tanning product. Basically, the Scientific Committee of Consumer Safety has deemed DHA safe to apply to the skin in concentrations up to 10% and also has deemed it safe in um, and hair dyes up to 6.25%. That being said, is not that commonly used in hair dyes, at least that's my understanding. Anyway, so the EU has been like, okay, well, let's just make sure that we limit it to no more than 10% in sunless tanning products and no more than 6.25% in in hair dyes, which, you know, like I said, it's not that common in hair dyes anyways. So it's, it's really not, see, it's really not as scary as it sounds. They're basically just, limiting the maximum amount that is allowed to be sold in products, sunless tanning products, but it's based on what has been deemed to be safe for human use up until a maximum threshold. Not much is really changing other than the fact that there is a rule now. And the reason I say this is because most uh, sunless tanning products on the market, they don't use very high percentages of DHA. They use typically, you know, three to 5% max because higher percentages end up giving you that orangey streaky look. They go on a lot more streaky. Higher percentages typically are gonna be found in products that are offering more of an instant tan. Products with concentrations of DHA greater than 10%, they're gonna be the ones that are kind of marketed as a more faster onset of tan or a deeper tan. So the deeper, the darker coloration of the tan is gonna be higher percentages. So that may impact some sunless tanner products that use a very high percentage, but they're not actually that common. I mean, typically it's gonna be one to 3%, especially um, in more of the gradual tanning products, it's, it's not gonna be as high as, as, as greater than 10%. So all that to say, you know, there may be a few brands, a few products here and there where the companies have to reformulate them. And if you're used to getting a product that offer, that gives a very deep tan uh, almost instantly, you may notice that that has been tweaked, changed, and it's no longer the same product. But it's not to say that one thing I wanna make clear though, just because they put this regulation in place, this restriction on the maximum amount, don't assume that that says anything about the safety of DHA. It really doesn't. It's just basically, okay, we know this ingredient is safe. It's been used in products, um, but what's like the maximum dosage that we've looked at and shown safety. It's 10% in the leave-on products, it's 6.25% in the hair care products. So let's just limit it at that. That's what the EU restriction is. It's not even saying that products that have higher percentages are unsafe. It's, it's, it's more, we don't know the safety of those, those. Those haven't been shown. But those types of products have been used with no evidence of any harm to human health. So if you use products with high percentages of DHA, don't be alarmed by this legislation. It's not banning those because they're unsafe or you know cancer causing. There's a lot of misrepresentation out there about how 
legislation around cosmetic ingredients, what it actually means. And it, as a result, it can end up fear mongering and DHA is one of those ingredients that often does get, get demonized. I'm a huge fan of it. I don't really use it myself, although I dabble in it from time to time. I don't use it myself because A, I'm too lazy, and B, I'm not really seeking a tan, but I do like the idea of having that, potentially that long wave UVA protection on board in some fashion, because very, you know, sunscreens, aside from the new UVA immune filter from La Roche-Posay, they don't really cover those long UVA wavelengths. In the US, DHA use is restricted to external application only. Uh, it's not allowed uh, to be used on mucous membranes, so the eyes, the lips, uh, inside the mouth. And the reason for that is that the FDA has not received any safety data from those routes, only from the external application. Um, so don't go snorting your sunless tanner. Now, if you go in a spray tan booth, make sure, you know, spray tan booths or whatever, they should be offering you protection for your eyes, for your lips, and uh, to make sure that you don't inhale the spray tan but totally safe to be applying to the skin. And I actually encourage people who enjoy having a tan, I really do encourage you to use sunless tanners and protect your skin from the sun with sunscreen uh, and sun protective clothing, limiting your time outdoors. Don't sunbathe to get a tan because tanning from the sun or from a tanning bed, that is a form of skin injury. If you like the way that injured skin looks, get it from a sunless tanner. Totally safe to do that. Um, doesn't put you at risk for cancers, doesn't age the skin, doesn't cause wrinkles, nothing like that. So much safer. So please do not, you know, hear this new legislation and misinterpret it as that this ingredient is unsafe. It's totally safe. It's just, you know, there have to be restrictions in place for any ingredient and products in terms of a maximum concentration and route, those kinds of things. But it's not to say anything really about this being an unsafe ingredient. So I want to make that clear. Now I mentioned earlier that DHA has been shown to offer some protection against those long wavelengths of UVA, but I want to make it clear that this, uh, that using a sunless tanner is not a substitute for sunscreen. It doesn't offer broad spectrum protection against all the UV rays that come from the sun. You still need to wear sunscreen over the sunless tanner, and you need to also be wearing your sun protective clothing, uh, not staying out too long during midday hours, especially when UV rays are most intense. This new restriction went into effect in January, but I think a lot of people have been asking me more about it recently because maybe it's just, you know, summer is coming up. People are more interested in using sunless tanning products than they were back in January. If you used a sunless tanning product last year that produced a very deep tan or one that produced a deep tan pretty quickly, you may notice a difference in it. The thing about sunless tanning products is that they don't reveal the percentage of DHA in the product. I mean, that's part of their proprietary formula. So it's going to be very difficult for you to know which ones have changed and which ones haven't. But if you notice a difference in your product, it may be that previously it had greater than 10% DHA in it. Um, but again, brands, they don't reveal the percentage of DHA in their product. They're not gonna reveal that kind of trade secret stuff. You know, in the US, DHA, it's just a cosmetic ingredient. While they're while it's regulated in the sense of purity, they're, it's not a drug, you know, it's not an over-the-counter medication, so they don't have to reveal the percentage of, of it as, you know, an active ingredient. They're not alleging that it's a treatment for anything. All right, you guys, let me know in the comments, though. Do you guys use sunless tanners? I, I advocate for them. I think they are a great option. Obviously, they're a great alternative, in my mind, to a UV tan, which puts you at risk for premature skin aging and all sorts of skin cancers. And I think they also do have some potential to offer a little bit of additional protection against those, U those long UVA wavelengths that contribute to certain photosensitive conditions like polymorphous light eruption, actinic perigo, um, solar urticaria. Uh, and per perhaps even uh, melasma, hyperpigmentation. I think they also are a great cosmetic for people who are just looking to camouflage 
skin conditions that lead to depigmentation like vitiligo. Let me know in the comments though if you guys use some and what brands do you use. I'm always curious to know in case I ever decide to start dabbling in it. Uh, my experience is pretty limited with them to the Jergens Gradual Tan product. I always like that, it works, it's inexpensive but I know there are a ton others. Anyways, I hope this video answered your questions about the EU's new restriction on uh, the percentage max of DHA in sunless tanning products. On the end slide, I'm gonna put my video talking about how DHA does not lead to more accelerated skin aging. That's a common myth on the internet, so check that video out. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.